The Fighter An expert in physical combat, a master of many weapons, a warrior that strikes fear into the heart of its foes. The fighter archetype in Ashes of Creation is destined to fill that warrior slot in your party. A heavy, armor-wearing, massive sword-wielding, damage-dealing beast that isn't afraid to get up close and personal with any enemy and deliver a massive amount of damage. Ashes of Creation has a unique take on classes. While the core fighter archetype will be similar to what you'd imagine when it comes to a traditional plate-wearing DPS of any fantasy RPG, what truly defines a class in Ashes of Creation is the combination of the primary and secondary archetypes coming together to create this class combination. The secondary archetype can be unlocked as you progress in the game, giving players 8 potential options for each class. For the fighter, these combinations include the Blade Caller, which is a Fighter Summoner, the Blade Dancer, which is a Fighter Bard, the Weapon Master, which is a Fighter Fighter, the Dreadnought, which is a Fighter Tank, the High Sword, which is a Fighter Cleric, the Hunter, which is a Fighter Ranger, the Shadow Blade, which is a Fighter Rogue, and the Spell Sword, which is a Fighter Mage. The primary archetype you pick upon character creation is a permanent choice. The secondary archetype unlocked through player progression around level 25 will augment the primary changing the types of abilities, their appearance, and how they interact with your targets. However, the secondary archetype will not add any new skills to your kit, but it's also not a permanent addition. You are able to swap your secondary archetype as you see fit. There might be some sort of currency requirement or quest you have to embark on, but overall, if you decide you don't like the setup you have, you could always change it to something else. It is all about the augments, which allow you to customize your playstyle. Whether you want to drop a few heals with your ranged attacks, or take a more direct melee approach, the augments will let you tailor your character to your liking. Keep in mind that everything we know about the fighter and the other archetypes is a work in progress. Ashes of Creation is in an alpha state, and anything and everything could change as they continue to react to player feedback. Most of your abilities will be unlocked through careful selection within the skill tree. You won't have a hundred different abilities ready for you in your skill book to place on your bar, because Intrepid wants you to make a thoughtful selection within the trees to really help cater to your playstyle. As you progress, you'll unlock skill points. Skill points are expected to be rewarded every fraction of a level instead of once per level, as is common in most games. You can then place these points in your tree to gain access to new abilities or upgrade existing ones that you've specced into. Looking at the skill tree on the screen, it's clearly a work in progress suited for a level cap of I believe 25. Being an alpha everything you see is subject to change and abilities may come and go through the testing phases. Some of the ones we've seen already could even be absent by the time alpha 2 finally launches as Intrepid feels they didn't fit that class design as they hoped. For Fighter, the abilities we know so far include Battle Cry, unleash a resounding war bellow, applying the riled effects to the caster and nearby party members, and shaken to all nearby enemies, gain 5 combat momentum for each target that was riled, and riled targets have increased stability and higher chance of tripping shaken enemies. Blitz, charge directly towards your target enemy, dealing physical damage on arrival. Blood Fusion, return 100% of damage dealt as health and 50% of damage dealt as mana over the next 6 seconds. If activated while below 50% health, gain 25% increased damage mitigation and healing received over the duration. Brutal Cleave, perform a wide sweeping attack, dealing damage to enemies in front of you. This ability shares a cooldown with Overpower, and hitting an enemy with a weapon combo finisher reduces its cooldown by 8 seconds. Gain 10 to 20 combat momentum based on the number of targets hit. Cataclysm. Deal heavy damage and apply shake into all enemies in a large area in front of you. Shaken enemies have a 5% chance to trip when hit, and the effect is removed when triggered. This chance doubles when hit by riled targets. Crippling Blow. Deal physical damage and apply snare to target enemy for 6 seconds. Exert. Consume your combat momentum, rapidly gaining 20% increased attack and movement speed and immunity to disabling effects while active. Must have at least 20 combat momentum to activate, and the effects end when all combat momentum is fully depleted. Form of Celerity. While in this form, the caster receives 2% movement speed per 10 combat momentum, up to a maximum of 20%. Shifting form costs 20% of the current momentum and triggers cooldowns on all other combat forms. Form of Ferocity. While in this form, the caster receives a 2% attack speed per 10 combat momentum, up to a maximum of 20%. Form of Fluidity, while in this form the caster receives 4% Disable Resistance chance per 10 combat momentum, up to 40%. Leap Strike, leap to a target location and deal damage around you, snaring target hits for 3 seconds. Lethal Blow, perform a powerful descending strike upon your target enemy, dealing additional physical damage based on the amount of missing health, up to 300% base damage.
range. Lunging Assault Spend 15 combat momentum to lunge in a direction a short distance and perform an upward swing upon arrival, dealing damage to enemies in front of you. You are immune to hard crowd control effects while performing this ability. Maim Perform a powerful melee strike in a short forward cone, dealing physical damage to all targets hit, plus 100% additional damage to recently tripped targets. Overpower Deal direct damage and apply shaken to your target enemy. This ability shares a cooldown with Brutal Cleave, and hitting an enemy with a weapon combo finisher refreshes the cooldown of this ability. Rupture, deal physical damage and apply a debuff to the target. While the debuff is active, the target acquires 5 wound stacks per second that they're moving. After 5 seconds, the target takes heavy damage plus additional damage for each stack of wound it has. Whirlwind, a channeled ability that deals physical damage to all enemies around the caster with each spin. The spin rate increases the longer it's channeled, the caster is immune to hard disabling effects while spinning, activate this ability again to end channeling early. A lot of these abilities will be able to continue to be upgraded as you invest more skill points in them, and these upgrades can include increased damage, reduced resource costs, shortened cooldowns, and more. The fighter has its own unique class resource on top of mana called Combat Momentum that you may have heard of in some of the abilities. This resource, displayed under your mana bar, starts out as an empty bar. As you use certain abilities and weapon combos, you will build up that momentum. When you've earned enough, Combat Momentum will grant you unique stat bonuses based on the form you're in. These forms, as I mentioned before, are a form of celerity, ferocity, and fluidity. When it comes to the fighter's choice of weapons, as you probably know by now, weapons aren't locked behind specific classes. Your fighter could wield two-handed swords if it wanted to, or even opt for a wand. While it might not be the most beneficial choice for the archetype, you can still have fun experimenting with different setups. The fighter though, as it seems, will be able to handle the majority of weapons with ease. The fighter in Ashes of Creation looks amazing, especially for something still in its alpha state, and it really gives us the best representation of what melee combat is meant to be in Ashes of Creation with his hybrid system. And this is one of the archetypes that I am extremely excited to get my hands on come October 25th when Alpha 2 finally begins.